So hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Okay. So yeah, I'm Luca Dinti. I'm now a postdoc uh, in Milano Bicocca. And today, this is a nightlight talk of our recent contribution that is now published on Nature Method. And yeah, this is my was my main project when I was a postdoc with Ryan Cheek at Institute Pasteur. So this is a collaboration between UC Davis, so Feredun, and Persoa Institute Pasteur and University of Milano Bicocca. And it's about the discovery of structural variations from IFI reads. So um, even if structural variation is any kind of difference, any variation that, that affects a big chunk of a chromosome, so you can have a big portion of the chromosome that is inverted or translocated. But anyway, in this work, we started focusing on insertion and deletions that, let's say, that are a bit easier. And we decided to use HiFi reads. If you don't know, HiFi reads are a new, most new technology from PacBio and can be described as long reads with the accuracy of short reads. But let's start with a bit of motivation. So why we decided to tackle the problem of discovering structural variations? Well, first of all, let's say that structural variations are mostly overlooked by most of the studies available in the literature because they focus mostly on SNPs and, in and small illness. But although this less interest, uh, structural variations, most structural variations are really important because they account for genomic disorders. And well, we decided to use HiFi reads because well, they are clean, they are cl uh, long, they are clean, so they are easy, let's say, easier to use, easier to analyze. And well, our uh, assumption was that they should provide more information and they should pro allow more easily to detect structural variations. So currently, if you want to discover structural variations from long reads, you have a lot of alignment-based heuristics like PPSV, SNFOR, SNFOR2, and some others. But all of these approaches, let's say, show the same limitations. I will call these limitations as challenges because these are the challenges that we wanted to tackle and to face in our work. So first of all, all these approaches uh, shows very low accuracy in hard to call regions of the genome, like tandem repeats and syndromers. And Moreover, they also show limited support for heterozygous structural variations. So what I mean by heterozygous structural variations are those variations that show a different allele of both haplotypes. So for instance, you have a 100 base pair insertion on one haplotype and 300 base pair insertion in the other haplotype. And yeah, so these are the challenges that we wanted to face. And we did, and this is our contribution. So SVDSS, the stand for Structural Variation Discovery from Sample Specific Strings. And in this approach, we combine multiple strategies in a single method. So we take something from the mapping free world for computing signatures for the structural variations. And we, we took something from assembly based world for polishing the signatures and something from mapping world, alignment world for calling, for effectively calling the structural variation. I will try to give you an idea of the approach, but by merging all these strategies, all these ideas together, we were able to uh, obtain overall superior accuracy, especially in hard to call and heterozygous regions of the genomes. So th th that was our goal. But before introducing the approach, let me introduce the building block of the approach that is this notion of specific strings. This is a notion that we introduced a uh, few years ago. And I won't enter into the details of this, but let's assume that we have two sets of strings, R and T. A T-specific string is a any substring okay, that occurs in the set T, but that doesn't occur in R. Then there are some other more constraints and some other properties, but if you're interested, you can check the paper. What, just what we need to know here is that let, in our context, in our application, we have the reference that is R, and we have the sample of read that is T. Our idea was, can we extract from the sample of reads portion of the reads that do not occur in the, in the reference? If yes, then all these strings, substring of the read, should pinpoint some difference between the reads and the reference genome. So this can be, for example, sequencing error, yes, SNPs, index, but also the breakpoints of our structural variations. So the idea was, let's use this notion, this specific string, computed from the sample against the reference to detect the breakpoints of the structural variations. And we did it, and we implemented it in SVDSS, so it's a classical pipeline for calling structural variations, so it starts from the reference and the reads, the aligned reads, and it produces a VCF. And I will try to give you a quite high-level idea of the approach, and I will work you through the steps of the, of the approach. So in the first step, 
we, I will focus on this region. So these are reads aligned to the reference genome. We can see that we have two different insertions. So some reads come from an haplotype with an 800, yes, more or less, 870 uh, insertion, while other reads come from another haplotypes with a 1,000 base pair long insertions. So in the first step, the reads are cleaned from errors, SNPs, and small leaders because we don't want, because as I told you before, any difference between the reads and the reference genome will produce a specific string. Since we want to focus on structural variations, we decided to clean the reads from all the other stuff that we don't care about. So we do something like this. So now we have clean reads, clean reads that should contain only the structural variations. Then in the second step, we compute the specific strings. And well, let's say that in, in the best case scenario, every specific string will cover the breakpoints of the variation that we are interested in. So we can see, for, for instance, that we have the specific string that is a gliding green that come from some read, and the specific string cover the structural variations. So in the second step, in the first step, okay, we need to place the specific string because for the specific strings, the only information that we know is from which read it, it came from and from where it starts on the read, okay? So in the first step, we try to align the, the specific strings back to the reference genome, but we don't align them because they are, most of the time they are quite short, so it's hard to align them well. So what we do, since we know the read alignment and we know from which portion of the read the specific string has been extracted, we can just place the specific strings back to the reference genome by extracting the alignment, their alignments from the read alignment. So let's call this alignment extraction. Then in the following step, we cluster specific strings by locus on the reference genome. So here we have just one locus, so one, one structural variation, but let's imagine that we have multiple structural variation on one read, so we can cluster them by position using an overlap criteria. So if two specific strings overlap, it means that they probably come from the same locus, and that locus should be used to call a structural variation. Then, now we have the cluster of specific string. What we do to account for the diploidy, of the potential diploidy of the human individual, of, human, yeah, of humans, we split the, sub, the cluster into two subclusters, okay? We do this right now using a, based on the length of the specific strings. So using the length, we, our idea is let's use the length to discern between the two haplotypes. Okay. And then once we have the two subclusters, in this case we have two subclusters, one for the specific string coming from the covering the insertion of length 800 and something, and the other covering the insertion of 1,000 base pair. Then what we do, we use partial rotor alignment to create a consensus from, for each um, cluster. So we compute a representative that should represent the correct allele. So let, that should also represent a, a, I mean, the potential portion of the apotype. And then, so this is more or less an, an assembly, more or less, but not an assembly. And then in the last step, we call the allele, we call the variations by realigning back the consensus to the reference genome using a local alignment. Since we know the locus, where is the locus, we know the potential uh, string of the haplotype, so we can locally realign each consensus back to the reference genome and then call the allele, the, the structural variation. Okay, so I just gave you the, an overall idea, I mean, of the approach. There are multiple details that I didn't explain, but you can check the paper if you want. And yeah, we run several analyses. So we consider multiple samples, the AG002 and 07 from the deep consensus paper and the CHM14 from the telomere to telomere uh, project. We consider different uh, coverages just to check the robustness of the approach. We consider multiple aligners since our input depends on the alignment. And then we compare against multiple callers. But when we arrived to evaluate our calls, uh, a question came to our mind that is which truth set we should use. And actually, the only, more or less the only truth set that is available in the literature is the Jayab call set, that is a set of calls on the AG002 individual that is more, more or less used by all SB callers in their paper. So the, the evaluation is always done on this call set. However, we discovered that there is a potential problem with this call set 
that can be summarized with a word that is incompleteness. Indeed, the um, Jayab divided the genome into two tires, tier one and tier two, and the tier one accounts for 86% of the region of the genome, while the tier two accounts for the 0.7% uh, percent of the genome. And in the readme of the repository, they say that although many of the tier one codes are challenging, it likely only includes 50 or less percent, 50 percent or less of the total structural variation in the genome, and it is likely biased towards easier structural variations. So this means that all the callers have been, let's say, evaluated on easy to call structural variation that fall in easy to call regions of the genome. So what we wanted instead was First of all, we want to evaluate the calls on multiple individuals. So we didn't want to focus only on the AG002. So we, we needed to build a truth set also for other individuals. Then we, our goal was to evaluate callers in our to, to call regions of the genome, so that are mostly ignored by the Jayab call set. And then, yeah, we wanted also to remove any bias on the, on the evaluation. So what we did, we created a new truth set using deep, deep call, that is an assembly to assembly SV calling tool, and then we evaluated our accuracy using Truvari. These are two tools available in the literature. Okay, and these are the results that we have, the main results. So, okay, yeah, you can see the table. Um, it, this big table can be summarized with that sentence. That is, we have been able to achieve higher recall with comparable, if not greater, precision. Indeed, especially in the extended tier two, that is everything outside tier one. So, all the, let's call them the art regions of the genome we can see that we have been able to achieve a very high recall with comparable precision. So for instance, in, on the AG002, we have been able to increase the recall of 15%. So it's quite a good gain without losing in precision. And more or less also in tier one, we have similar results, especially on the AG002 and AG007. So these are pretty good results, but we were interested in understanding why we have been able to achieve such a big gain in terms of recall. So we analyzed most of the calls, and we discovered that most of the calls are heterozygous calls that are, as I told you before, are calls which present two different alleles on the two haplotypes. So for instance, here you can see that we have a region, and we have two different insertions. One is of length 168, and the other one is 224. So we have the two haplotypes, and the two haplotypes confirm this, this fact. And we can see that here is the results provided by all the tools. We can see that SVDSS has been the only one that has been able to call both, up, both alleles with the right length, while all other callers, some of them just call one of the two, while some others just do an average of the lengths. Okay. So this is something that is not that correct. So this is the main reason why we have been able to achieve a higher recall. Then we also perform a, an analysis on coverages, so we consider different multiple level of coverage, so 5x, 10x, and 15x. And we can see from the plot that also at the 5x, that are the dot, okay, there, uh, SVDSS has been able to achieve very good results, especially with respect to other callers. But where SVDSS shines is at 10x or more coverages, where we can see that there is even a bigger gain in terms of recall. But yeah, also at 5x, we, it works. Then finally, we decided to, com to evaluate the callers on this challenging medical relevant, relevant uh, structural variation uh, call set provided by the JIAB. So it contained 250 structural variation in, in these genes. And from their paper, they say that these regions were excluded from the previous call set because they were too complex. And this was comforting because they, de they detected this structural variation using our same approach. So they use IFINSM, so assembly, and then deep call. And from the plot, we can see that we have been able to, all the callers have been able to call most of the structural variations, but we have five more calls that we have been able to detect. And like the previous example comes from this call set. So there are heterozygous calls that we have been able to call while others haven't. Okay, so to conclude, uh, SVDSS is a recaller for PacBio i fire reads, and this, it shows the best calling performance, especially in uh, R2 core regions of the genome, and I recall without sacrificing precision, and there are still some open questions, like can we extend this framework to complex variation like inversion and translocations? Although I want to note that also for insertion and deletion, even if they are quite easier, there are still a lot of to do for improving the calling accuracy of any tool. 
And then we are also interested in understanding if we can improve even more in, on low coverage samples. Well, this concludes my presentation. So thanks to my collaborators, and thank you for your attention.